Welcome back to the third episode of the No Destination Show. We've got a little bit of a different episode in store for you guys today. We've got Josh Aloa and Kiko Cruz from the Syracuse football team, two offensive linemen. Both have great personalities. Hope you guys like it. Let us know in the comments. While you're here, make sure to go follow us on all platforms, the Space Syracuse and No Destination Media. We've got a lot of good content coming soon. Let's get into the show. Welcome back to the third episode of the No Destination Show. Hope you enjoyed the last two. Excited to continue to give you guys content. Today, I'm here with two very special guests. Um, probably the two guys I want to have my back if I got in a street fight. You already know. I, I am a lover, not a fighter. Same. Um, Enrique Cruz, Josh Loa, welcome to the space. Thanks for having us, man. Appreciate it, man. Thank you for having me, man. Yo. This space is fire, bro. You like it? And I see that little Jordan picture right there, too, like representing Jordan over Braun all day. Y'all don't know. Y'all know now. Oh, so we're going to start there because oh, I'm on God. LeBron's side. Oh, where's LeBron at? I don't, I don't see Bronny, though. Yeah, we got we got Braun. We got Tupac. We got Nipsey. If you want to see any of this, check out the Space Syracuse on Instagram. I'm going to shamelessly plug just because I can. Or what you could do, what you could do is put a picture of D. Rose up there. Yeah. Now you really be legit. And now we're going to get into that. Actually, this is one of the things I wanted to ask you because- yeah. From Chicago. Yep. I'm from Boston. We've talked about this before. Yes, we have. Cities. I want you to pitch me. You got 60 seconds. Pitch me on why Chicago is the best city in the country. Chicago's the best city in the country because if you guys like New York, New York is a very dirty city, but it has a lot of skyscrapers and it's known for having like a whole bunch of skyscrapers and a beautiful skyline. But if you want a cleaner and better city with a way better skyline, you go to Chicago. And Chicago has some of the best food in the world. We have food from all over the country. Everybody wants some good Puerto Rican food, Mexican food, soul food. Go to Chicago. Like, you got, have you guys ever been to Harold's Chicken? Got some mild sauce with some wings? Like, come on now. You can't get that anywhere else. We have food from all over. We are a big city, third biggest city in America. And we are a very busy city, but not nearly as busy as Los Angeles or New York. And we're cleaner than both of those cities combined with one of the most beautiful skylines in America. So we talk about Boston yeah. and Lake Michigan. <laughs> like you say, New York, you said Boston. No, we said pitch them wise. Yeah, the yeah. City in no, that, that was good. Man, that was not Charlotte. We could shit, yo. <laughs> yeah, bro, just shot a commercial. Like, dead yo, head, bro. What, what was it like growing up in Charlotte? How was that? It was different because I was born in Seattle, so it was just me and Dukes out there. Uh, being away from family was hard. I didn't want to go at first. Uh, the biggest thing was weather. Mm. Seattle, you know, Northwest, like raining, depressing. <laughs> <laughs> damn near depressing but going to charlotte hot every day hum humid didn't know anybody it was tough making friends at first they got used to it so i basically grew up there moved there like yeah. fourth grade and it was just us ever since so if you were to pick right now where do you live in where would you pick seattle or charlotte charlotte that's where all my friends are it's just family back in seattle i feel that i'm more comfortable in charlotte you know charlotte is one of the most grow one of the biggest growing cities in America right now. That's so. it. It is up and coming. It is Yo, you know coming. your cities, bro. I know You're my cities. I do my research. Hey, yeah. I, I'm a I'm a shit talker. Yeah. So like, before I talk shit, I gotta know what I'm talking shit about. Yeah. So like, I be meeting people right, and they be like, Yeah, I'm from I'm from um, I got meet a whole bunch of people from Jersey because we got a lot of people from Jersey on our team. Oh, you from Jersey? And I just I just know what I, I gotta know what you're talking crap about. You know what I mean? North, South Jersey. There's no Central Jersey. Just North and South. Like people so like yeah, from Central Jersey, big okay. different. On the, on the topic of of shit talking, you guys are both offensive linemen yeah. in the trenches. I'm imagining it's going down in there. What's that like on game to game basis? People just talking the whole time. It really just depends on the type of person you're going against. For real. sometimes you get the person who just chatters the whole time. Sometimes you get the person who really just be playing for real. And then sometimes you got the people who don't talk till the end of the game. You got you whoop them the whole game, and they want to talk because they get one play. But, like, it really just depends on the play you're playing for. Right now, um, so Dan and Kyle both said spring's been super competitive. Yes. And so you guys are going against, uh, going up against the defensive guys. Yeah. Who's talking out of that group? Fidel talking the most right yeah. now. Where it really is um, is him. It's good, though. Yeah. Bro, it's really, like, it's all the Jersey guys, but it's fire. Though. Like, the atmosphere, though, is, like, I love that shit talk atmosphere. Like, it just gets me going. But yeah, Fidel on the D line, really, yeah. really him talking the most crap, and a couple other guys too. But he really be like the loudest for real. But no, nah, it's fire though. That was so going off that conditioning. Like so, they said it was very competitive. They said the mm -hmm. conditioning, strength, all that's been off the charts. Dan said it's been like what it was in Michigan. Um, you guys 
big boys linemen. I'm imagining conditioning is probably not your favorite thing to do. No, I actually like it. For you like I, conditioning? I'm not too bad at it. Not yeah. too shabby. Do you like it? Just do I? No. What's what's the what's the worst conditioning girl they put you in this spring? The worst conditioning girl we went through this spring, man. Honestly, we didn't really condition as no, much no. this spring. When they made us do the uh, the bear crawls, oh. we're not we're not coming to that. I don't think that counts the conditioning. All right, so um, those is one practice where we had to team up with people just your size, and you already did a, a complete like a super hard workout. Mm -hmm. Right, and you go out to the field with people like the same size, so like me and Josh should be in the same group, and you have to stand on the thing on like this little thing that you got to push, and it was groups of three, and you had to push them down and back as fast as you can. You had to make a time limit, I think, too. I'm not too sure, but I think that was probably the hardest one we did. No, we had a crazy workout. It was a boot the camp. Was boot camp. It was a bl after that. It was like a blizzard. Made us run the campus. Did a little scavenger hunt. We had to run back. Oh, yeah. Blue Campbell's yeah. crazy. That was the worst one. I was sitting in the library looking out the window, and I saw y'all running by. Really? I was like, what are you we literally literally my team. Yeah. My team, after that, we were just, uh, we were waiting at the bus stop. I was, you know, yeah. <laughs> I think I saw you on Instagram Live. I don't know if it was then or another time. Man, was always outside. That was the craziest thing ever. I wouldn't recommend it to my worst enemy. So, you guys have both been in Q's for a couple years. Fran just got here. How's this spring been different from the Dino era here? I think it just um, the atmosphere is different. Like I said, way more competitive, way more people like talking and stuff. And like he likes that stuff, so like he allows us to like really be like that for real. And then I think it just um, way, way more, way more intense. Mm -hmm. Like the practices are just way more intense than anything that we've been used to. And these the coaches are putting pressure on us. Also, our teammates are putting the pressure on other teammates. So I really think the intenseness is just completely different. In that uh, the doc they put out, shout out to the Syracuse media team, Baron video. Mm, um, that was hard. It was crazy. One right. of the things they were talking about was how like every single practice you're competing for something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I imagine that. I mean, like it's just building you for games and like building you for that intensity when it comes down to it. Uh, definitely. Yeah. Watching that video, he was like, out of all the four years, this is the hardest year. This is year four for me. This is the hardest spring. Year four? Yo, you old, bro. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, yeah. Oh, on the way out. This is the hard, definitely the one of the hardest. Not even one of the, it's the hardest, like, spring, going through all those workouts, mat drills we had so far. Yeah. It was, it was tough. I saw, I was doing my research before this, as I always do. I saw a stat from you, and I don't know, you tell me if it's true or not. You said you played over a thousand snaps in college football and not giving up a sack. Me? Yeah. Snap. That's, that's a great stat. That's a wonderful <laughs> stat. Where do you see that at? It's beautiful. I saw it online. Is that true? Have you given up a sack for in college football? I mean, if they say I didn't, then I didn't. <laughs> but, didn't. I mean, <laughs> what the facts say? What the what does it say? This yeah. is like when I said Dan's nickname was Thunder Dan. He was like, "Yeah, I've never heard of that before." Yeah, yeah, it's Josh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's Josh. My dad. What's it like? This is more of a football question. What's it like blocking for a guy like Schrader versus McCord? Obviously, they're two different styles. You've got kind of the more pocket passer than the guy that's mobile. How's that affect you in the trenches? Um, so basically what, what a guy like Schrader who's like a mobile quarterback, you never really know what's going to happen for like, it's really unpredictable. And a lot of times, I mean, he's, he's just going at a thousand miles per hour. And when you're blocking, it's like, you got the guy going like this and that, like he's going sideways, trying, trying to find the ball, trying to see where he's going. Like if he's, if he's running away, he's trying to go catch him and stuff. But when you're blocking for more like a pocket passer and stuff, is you just, you just got to stay on your block for as long as you can let him make his reads. Because he, he definitely can make the throws. He can definitely make the reads. So it's really just, it's just a more, um, how long longer you got to stay on the block for real. Because, like, when you have, a, like, a mobile quarterback, you don't see his read, he's probably going to go. Mm -hmm. So now you got to, like, either turn it into a run block or, like, let go so you're not holding. Or with a pocket passer, like McCord, who could, who could um, sure he can make those throws too, but McCord, who could really, he can make any throw possible. You just really got to stay in the pocket and let him do his thing. How's Kyle been so far? I don't know. I think the kid's kind of weird. Yeah. Social media. Yeah, he's kind of weird to me. <laughs> At me, Kyle. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm excited to just see him throw it. We we uh we he was our first video. We posted him, and it's just funny because Ohio State. I don't know if you guys have seen that fan base. They're like oh, they're fucking charts. Yeah. They yeah. just don't stop talking. Like Ooh. I've there are people in the comment sections of our TikTok videos. Ohio State and Michigan fans. Two guys, there's 83 comments between the two of them, just yapping away at each other. For real? Like non -stop. that? Yeah. 
That was it was crazy. one of the things I talked to him about though is like that fan base is just like they went eleven and one last year. It's a pretty solid season, and they just it's a hell of a fuck. That's a hell of a season. Yeah, I mean, imagine like, if we went eleven and one this year, what? he'd be praised as like the next Messiah. Like it would be yeah, for real. game oh, over. Yeah, no, that fan base is insane, but. Last couple of years there, you know, they had Justin Field, like QB, uh, CJ Stroud. Yeah, yes. I mean, they were they were doing some some pretty big things. Different. So I mean, I guess it's just their expectation. But he did, he has came off in a a great season. Yeah. Um. All right, this is off topic from football, but I, I was talking with both of them about food options around here. Okay. Um. For you guys. Okay. I'd be gatekeeping. I'm not gonna I know you do. He'd be gatekeeping. I stood up everything. on a Snapchat story one day. He was like, yeah, I don't know if I can tell you cheese. this. I was like, bro. Man, I'm trying, I'm still trying to get that chopped cheese from him. Yeah. I'm but putting everybody food on. Food options, you see, what I don't like what people do is they be like, Q's don't got good food. Q's don't got this and that. Like, I'm not going to say Q's has better food in Chicago. Never. It don't. It doesn't. Nowhere does. But, man, if you if you really go to Q's, you really find, like, the, the places. It's all mom and pop shops, bro. You find these little places. The food here is actually really good. Put them hit, on. It's got hidden gems. Well. Like you got to find the hidden gems. Put the people on. West yeah. End Kitchen. Type it in. You'll find it. Fire. It's fire. fire. Tell them I said you. Lie. I'm, I'm gonna gatekeep mine, but I'm gonna put y'all. <laughs> I'm, I'm about to give orange crate wings. Get the crate wings. <laughs> Yo, right, fire. Nah, that's yeah. fire. Right on topic. I slept on. Last year we did a wings and pizza eating competition. Um, that crate. Yeah, we're I trying see, to run it back potentially it. later this spring. So you're like you're Nicole, you're I was so that's what I was gonna ask. You two face off on one of those. Oh, I'm I'm busting. He's yeah. he has no chance against me. I'm not gonna lie to you. Pause, bro. No diddy, yo. yo. Oh. <laughs> that was crazy. Like how 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 many how many wings do you think you put down in an hour? An if hour? you were pushing yourself. I was really pushing myself. Yeah. Like forty or fifty. Damn, I thought you were about to say like triple digits. It, it gotta oh, be no, it no, gotta no. be flats though. I, I do drums, I do for like it don't really matter to me. I'm a flat type of person. Yeah. Yeah. How come? No diddy. Like, I feel like it's more meat on the bone. Yo, yeah. pause. <laughs> Yo. Yo, pause. Uh, <laughs> Adam Lewis, can you stitch in the uh, NIL deal that they did with Munch Jerky so Please people can it. see it? That Please was. It. it should still be on our page. Yo, what's up, everybody? I'm Enrique Cruz. I'm Josh Lowell. This is the Munch Jerky Challenge. Today, we'll be guessing between the three flavors of Munch Jerky Teriyaki OG, Pepper OG, and Spicy OG. Round one of the Munch Jerky Challenge. Oh my god, I gave me teriyaki first, I know. You're munching it, ain't you? Well, I'm munching this. <laughs> you ain't munching it, you ain't munching it. Alright. Teriyaki. Round two. And, 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 and. I think they gave us teriyaki good. Mm. I think teriyaki is pepper. No way. Are oh, you gonna suck on it? What? That's the final round of the munch jerky challenge. Mmm. I put my mama. This spicy. Hold up. This spicy as hell. It's cold, but I'm sweat. Hey man, this is like good stuff. I'll put it in a sandwich. I don't know. I'm gonna say like spicy teriyaki. I don't know. I taste some ter teriyaki. Mm. Spicy, bro. I don't taste no teriyaki. I'm not a fan of spicy. Good, right. but my mouth's on fire, man. Alright, here's a tiebreaker. I don't know. I think I already know what flavor I got. I can feel it. What you mean, bro? Like, I can just, I, I can feel that it's not as hard as a spicy one. What y'all saying, man? I'm just all right. You ready? Three, yeah. two, one. Teriyaki. Come on, bro. This is my favorite one. I got teriyaki too. Oh, oh real pepper, pepper, pepper. Oh, OG, OG, pepper, pepper. pepper. OG, pepper. Uh, Enrique. Yes, sir. Right. I'm starting to feel it now. Hold on. I don't want to take on the Munch Jerky Challenge yourself. Go ahead and head over to MunchJerky.com. That's you can try all three of the great flavors. Teriyaki OG, Pepper OG, and Spicy OG. Have a good one, guys. Munch Nation, let's ride. ride. <laughs> yeah, I was looking at it earlier. I think it's one of the best NIL videos filmed this year. That was hilarious. We did that guy a good deed. Still the munchiest much of them all. Yeah, if you ain't in the crew. box, you ain't doing something. You ain't Yo, doing it wrong. This, this, um, oh, wait, well, I'm sorry. We were paused though, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, all right. <laughs> Yo, this, this, is, this is for you. Um, how does it feel to be, I think you're the only person in the country that has a tailgate named after you. Man, it's phenomenal. Right? How'd that happen, first off? Like, what was the so process? So what happened was that? that we got this app called Influencer, right? And on Influencer, you get like NIL stuff on there and stuff. And um, they sent it out to everybody, basically the whole team. But nobody on the team even looked at it. Yeah. Right. And then at first, I didn't really, at first, like, I saw it, 
But then I was like, I was kind of like. glanced over it, didn't you? Yeah, I kind of just glanced over it and stuff. And then I really looked at it and I was like, yo, this is actually pretty cool. So then what they had you do was, is you had like to write an essay, or not an essay, but like a little like paper, like why you think you deserved it, this and that. So like I wrote one, boom, had my mom, my grandma look over it. We all looked over it, sent it in, right? And then we had this old teammate, uh, Rhino, shout out my boy Rhino, Chris Elmore. He, he takes on a group trail. He's like, yo, there's opportunity for y'all. Y'all like try signing up for it. So some people at the team, they even read what you had to do. They just said, I'll do it mm-hmm. or stuff like that. Sign their life away. Yeah. Then they they blessed me. And then the, um, I was helping when my friends move in and they said, yo, we want to do it with you. It'll be you. First year was me and Rhino. Mm-hmm. Like, we're both from Chicago. So it was, like, it was a pretty cool yeah. opportunity and stuff. And then um, this year it was um, – it was me and LaQuint, really, and then a couple other guys on the online. line. What, so, what do you what do you do? What is your actual involvement in it besides the name? Um, so, so basically, I um for the before every home game, I send a video in, like just saying how I'm doing, and it'll be with like a teammate. So, like it'll be me and Josh, just saying how we're doing the scenario, how we're excited for the game, and like basically is like like hyping them up a little bit. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's cool. Um, for you now, you're a little TikTok viral. Instagram viral too. That last video you posted popped off. Yeah, um, bro. I was we were talking about this before the show started. Why don't you post, bro? Yeah, if like you kept posting. You could build. Why a don't you yeah, post, yeah. Joshua? I'm mean, consistent for real. Why are you inconsistent? Why? Yeah, what's holding you back? Do you want money or no crazy. money? Oh, see here you go. Now it's just uh, I'll be seeing different trends. Be seeing which one I like, don't like. But then by the time I want to make the video, it'd be like a new trend going. So yeah. still hop on the trend. Get some money, fast. yo. My favorite video was the one, I don't know if it was last year or two years ago, where you guys were like in the dome. You know the video. I'm oh, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Was in that one. People yeah. still send me that video. Like, how how you that? Like one, that? that one was fire. That, that was, was a fire video. I saw it earlier today. I was like, that, that was, was like our freshman year spring ball, right? No, nah, that was um, end of camp right before the season. Oh, dang. It was uh, that 6 0 season. Yeah, that's oh. what it was. Um, football related question. Matt Bergeron, my boy, balling out right now. Yeah, he is. I think Falcons rookie of the year, some shit like yep. that. Um, mentored you guys. How was it like, kind of like playing behind him and seeing him? I know he's a leader in the locker room. Yeah. Was that was that helpful for you guys coming yeah. up? It's like on and off the field. Like on, you see his work ethic. Like it makes you even want to go harder. And off the field, like the way he holds himself, like with school, around other people, like treating them with respect, just like. It's like a um how you say it? like it's like a path you can follow like easy easily follow yeah <laughs> he gives yeah. you the blueprint yeah you yeah definitely I mean we I used to work out with him like we'll just like go hit like a, a Saturday morning workout mm-hmm. like it just um he was just a, a great mentor to have a great leader I mean thing like he always worked hard like it wasn't like nat- I mean, it was natural talent but like he just worked so hard on just to get way uh, get way better and just get know his position in and out that it was just like wow like and then when you see it on the field it was like damn like it was just it was real cool and stuff so like just being able to play with him and then um having like holding him account- him accountable and him holding me accountable at the same time that was just like a big honor to have bro they're gonna be good this year i think yeah, kirk definitely. Yeah. they're gonna be man they're gonna be fire they have some options who's that tight end they got Pitts, Kyle Pitts. They got Kyle Pitts. Bichon. They're probably going to use Kyle Pitts. They got, got what was that running back? B. John Robinson. Robinson. Man. Yeah. They man. Got I, they got a squad. They, they got they a also, they got, um, what's bro from um, the, Drake the tall light skin? They got Drake London. Drake London, too. Yeah. They, got a, they got a squad. Yeah. And like that division Saints, Saunders. Panthers, Baltimore, oh. Bucks. Bucks aren't bad, but rest yeah, 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 no. Shout out Sean Tuck on the Bucks. Yeah. Sean Tuck, yo. So you guys, while you've been here, you've had Tuck, LaQuint. I think they both ran for a thousand yards. Yeah, that's cool. That's three yeah. years in a row. Uh huh. Yeah. What are the What are their differences in like running style, play style? How would you kind of compare the two? Oh, uh, I think, well, for one, track speed. Sean has track speed, but Quint this is like explosive. Like he'll lower his shoulder down. Yo, yeah. he looks big. Quint will yeah. run you over. Quint don't care. Quint, Quint running anybody over. Quint run through contact. Like, Sean was more like shifty. Like it was, it's like a mindset elusive. thing. Like Quint, yeah. like you ain't stopping him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like well, Tuck, Tuck is an amazing player and stuff, but like I, I didn't really know Tuck too well, so like he could really talk more about Tuck. But well, the Quint's like his mindset is you, you're not stopping him. He's gonna get where he needs to get. He's gonna get that first down. He's gonna get that touchdown. He's gonna run you over. You know what he gotta do to get it. Like he ain't scared of none of that. 
If you guys could be one skill position for a year or one player in the team, who would it be? Hmm. A skill position. I'd play some on defense. So it's hit somebody. Yeah. Or like a safety or like a linebacker is coming out and smack somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Quarterback. Yeah, I was going to say. Corner? Quarterback. I played quarter- the most dripped out quarterback ever. I played quarterback in since grade. Ugliest quarterback yeah, seven, ever. Seven. Yeah. Were, you, you, were you recruited or in high school? Do you play defense? High school, yeah. Play yeah. Both Pull up the film. Hey, pause. Pull up his his um, high school film. Subscribe? No, I'm no, sorry. <laughs> Unpause. Oh. Um, when did you switch to the offensive side? Oh, uh, when I got here. Yeah. It was like, yeah, it was freshman year. It was COVID. Everybody was opting out. So mm-hmm. it was like either defense or offense. So I chose offense because, like, defense was stacked. Mm-hmm. So offense was like the easiest way to like because everybody was down, out COVID, all these opt out. So like, I felt like it was a faster way to get on the field. So that's why I chose. Yeah, offense was the way. I don't know if it was that year, or the year before Rhino. Mm-hmm. Dude played every position. Yeah, it was COVID. Rhino's right? played everywhere. COVID. Everything. Yeah. That was like I think it was that, that was about sixty-three sophomore year, and I just remember seeing him literally at all times on the field. Oh, you said every offense. position. It was definitely before COVID then. He been. was like defense, fullback, tight end. I remember he scored a touchdown one year. It was before I got here, though. Yeah, no, Rhino's played everywhere. He's played guard. He's played um, interior, D-line. True athlete. He's played tight end. Like, you really, Rhino's one of those players. You could have, yeah. They just could have put anywhere, and he was going to get it right. He's still playing ball. Where's yeah, it? he he just started. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, shout out Rhino. Shout um, out Burge. Bird who, still owe me bread. <laughs> yeah, who, who are who are a couple guys you think that are gonna pop off this year that are maybe flying under the radar? Under the radar? Yeah. It's young, young hard to say from under the radar. Season. Fran brought a lot of attention when you say under the radar. Yeah. So, I mean, like, there's a lot of freshmen. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. Um, and there's always guys that have been waiting their turn. So, do, are there, is there anyone that you can point out that you think Dennis like, is coming back from injury? Dennis from have a yeah. great season. Yeah. Yeah, that D-line's going to be good. Him and Fidel's going to go crazy. Um, if you Jacob look at Bradford's going to have a good season. Before he got hurt, he, Dennis was doing good. Like, he's going crazy. Uh, Tank, going to go crazy. I could really shout out a whole bunch of people right now, to be honest shout with you. Shout out your yeah. roommate, Tank, man. Yeah, no, Tank's going to have a good season, too. You know Tank? What's his last name? De- it's Deion Wilson. Deion Wilson. Trans- number four. Yeah. Make sure y'all tune in, man. He's a, he might have a season. Where'd he yeah. transfer from? Oh, yeah. New Mexico. New Mexico. Mexico State. I don't know Jeff. Who else? Too. I mean, man, who else on the offense? Is like I'm, well, I was going to say, yeah, like, bunch. the defense has filled out. The offense, like, Rondé, Dan, oh, Quinn, Z, Z, like, Z been snapping. We got a practice, whole bunch, like, I could really tell you, I could name, like, 15 players. I know about to go crazy, but, like, yeah. you only want a couple for us. So, it's yeah. like, I'm trying to really think. I could name a whole bunch who are about to go crazy this season, for real. Yeah, I'm excited. I think every, I mean, everyone is. I don't know if you guys, we were talking about Twitter earlier. I spent a lot of time on Twitter. Syracuse Twitter the last couple of years has been a very negative place recently. Yeah. It's popping. Like, people are very happy, excited, all of it. So franchise. Fran franchise. Fran franchise. For real. Um, out of all the coaches, I know Fran brought in a bunch of new coaches. Yeah. They all got thrown on a deserted island. Who's the one that's coming out alive? Coach Nick. I feel like Coach Nick. Nick Williams? <laughs> yeah. That boy, crazy. He be... He be juiced during practice, yeah. So him. I feel like he will survive. Yeah. yeah. Now coach, coach Scott might survive too, for real. Yeah, he from he from the city. Yeah, yeah he yeah. might. You know, people in the city he he might like look, look lift the gorilla up or something. Like he's strong. <laughs> he lift the gorilla up. Uh, he's, if you look at him, like yo, he, yeah. he's strong. Nah, he's type strong though. He might like look, climb up a tree or something. Like you know, my brother Coach Nick though, bro. Nah, coach Williams might. Oh, uh, Dale Williams. Uh, coach, he might too. <laughs> That's crazy, bro. I but social team they put out clips of the like hype tapes for the coaches. That's that's how crazy the staff is. Is you like I'm talking about the practices are that intense because the coaches are all competitive. They're all intense coaches ready to go at any time. Dan was saying you guys old practices you'd get like two minute water breaks and shit, and now it's just no, like, that's go, dead. Go, go, go. <laughs> it was like yeah. five minutes last practice. It was really like yeah. we had two five minute water breaks. That's dead. The no. brakes used to be buzzing. But now it's they like, used to be see, yeah. the thing about the brakes was that like you be going crazy. You get that five minute break. Now you cold. You don't even want to practice no yeah. more. Like it's like damn, yo. Now like we don't get that. And like during the time, like, damn I'm tired, I might need one. But now like 
in retrospect, I was thinking about it, it was like, it's just way better because like when you're in that groove, you stay in the groove. Yeah, a you're always get, ready. A lot of us get more reps too. Way more reps. Yeah. When was the first time you met Fran? Um, first time I like personally talked to him or met him because we all met him. him. First time you had a conversation with him. First time I had a conversation. Like one on one. Yeah. So I um so I had um first time he like talked to me for real. I had braids on <laughs> during the Boca Bowl game. Well, we're not talking about that bowl game, either, but during <laughs> that, that bowl game ball. I had braids. So like I used to just just have the the do rag on while I was like doing so just because I wanted to mess up for him. And then he he just walking around right. And we're doing like a little walk. He was like, yo. Take that do rag off. I said, "Oh, it's not my bad, coach." <laughs> He's like, "Yeah, man, that's a bad look. You trying to go to the league, right?" I said, "Yeah." He's like, "Don't do that." I was like, right, "I got you, coach." <laughs> but yeah, that was like the first time like talking to me for real. He's setting the culture. What about you? Who was your uh, first time? It was after the game. Everybody was in a bad mood, but we already knew like situation about to change. He came up to my locker. He was like, "This is the last time. Like, this is gonna happen." He said, "Be ready for like a big change," and we got to take off fast. Was that weird going into that game? I mean, Dino left. Nuns was the head coach. You knew Fran was coming in. Was it weird going into that with all that like confusion in terms of the, the head coach and what was happening? I mean, it wasn't really because we, we knew what was going to Like, we knew who our head coach was going to be. Like, I guess if we didn't know who our, who our head coach was going to be and we were still like questioning like what's going to happen, it would have been. But like, we already knew what was going to happen and stuff. So it was like, it wasn't really weird. I mean, you just got to go out and play the game. Do what you got to do for real. I think it was low-key a distraction. Yeah. Yeah. Not, not not locked in like we would a rival game or a big game during the season. With all that going outside noise, it's like kind of hard to focus on what's in the circle. When like it's not going to last yeah. very long. Yo, we got to get you like a – are they Oakleys that you wear? Pit Vipers. Pit Vipers. No, get, get, like, me, get me an Oakley deal, though. Like, you Oakley, want an Oakley deal, please, you want a Pit Vipers deal. Pit Vipers. I, I had a pair of, like, Under Armors that, that looked like Oakleys, yeah. and we had one on our spring break trick, and, like, somebody took them. Mm. But, like, they they fit my face perfectly. They're real somebody nice. took them, or, like, they fell off the head in the ocean? Got no, no, no. So, look, let me tell you, like, those those things robbed. fit my head so good yeah. that there was no way they're falling <laughs> off. I think I took them off for a second and somebody snatched it from me. Those glasses were fire. Yeah. But, I mean, Oakley is the, the best brand. So, Oakley, mm-hmm. let me know. Yeah. Shout out Oakley. You heard the man. Shout out Oakley. I, speaking of Ruba, I think the worst part was we, we was on a boat together oh in the back. God. He he cranked that Jones to like no, 40 no. miles per we hour. We was on a boat together, right? Tell me why we're on a boat together. And this boat was supposed to fit eight people. We fit 13 people on it plus two old linemen. <laughs> Right. Eight of us football players. And most of, yeah, we're <laughs> Eight all football, of us football players. players. Right? So, like, we on there, right? And I'm just in the front. I'm just chilling. I'm, looking, I'm like this. I'm just, like, enjoying the, the vibe. Like, wow. Right? I have my phone right here. And then a wave comes. Instead of, like, going over the wave, the boat goes under the wave, completely soaks everything on top. Tell me why my phone broke. So, I'm, I'm stranded in another island. I'm I'm stranded across. I'm even across stra- country. You're not stranded. I wasn't stranded, but I'm like I'm across the world, damn near. Couldn't text nobody. My phone was broken. I had no phone for like a whole week after that. It's yeah, crazy. I got you said across the world. We was in the Caribbean, bro. We was not. That's not the Caribbean. That's like that's, isn't that? That's South America. I got a feeling that's when his glasses fell off. No, no, no. My not, that, my Probably. glasses been fell off after that. Like before that. Yeah. Like it was just they were they were. You got something else you want to tell the people? What? So he's like accusing everybody. Oh, you can't swim. He can't swim. Oh my god. Oh, he can't, no. he can't oh, don't do that. He can't swim. Don't do that. We can pull up the video right now. Oh, I got it. I can swim. Please. No, I can swim for his life. Find that yeah. video. Even if you know how to swim, just like this. <laughs> no, hear me out, hear me out. There's two different types of swimming. I'm an off- offensive lineman. I'm 320 pounds. I don't float. Yeah. Over <laughs> talking about swimming is floor. No, I could swim for my life. I get from point A to point B. Growing up, you know, I'm a city boy. We didn't just go in 15 feet w- deep water and just freaking stand in there. Like, we was playing around, moving around, swimming. They over here like, bro, why aren't you floating? Why aren't you floating? You can't swim. A life you can't swim. <laughs> At I'm first, like, he started panicking. <laughs> no, no, I started panicking because they were talking about there's animals in the water. Oh, there was a, I mess with he the saw animals one fish. Animals. Yeah. Nah, he was fighting for his life. He saw a jellyfish. Bro, those are jellyfish trying to come and, like, attack me for I had. I, I got really, stung by one of those before. I came, I pulled the yeah, whole boat down, yeah, I climbed yeah. on top of it. I was not yeah. going. It was right by the ladder. I couldn't even climb up on the boat. <laughs> the about the I can't boat. Swim. When I tell you that boat tipped for 
I pulled the whole he thing down. I'm not playing with, I'm not playing with the jellyfish, yo. He said, where's my phone at? It's, wow. me, it's me or the jellyfish. Somebody got to go. Bro, that is crazy. Um, y'all got any other stories you want to share while you're on here? Anything you've been trying to get off the chest? Off my chest? No. Man. You guys got a Patreon? See, he might give me an idea. Look at that. What? <laughs> Patreon? Yeah, because I got some stories with Josh, yo. <laughs> Well, we can't say them all. We can't say them. Yeah, this might be a off air conversation. Yeah, well, I feel like I could get off this and just let you guys talk, and we'd have a pretty good show. So, yeah, we can have a great show. Cause <laughs> yeah, you said a Patreon. Hey, remember that one time when my uh, you guys said the story about when my cousin came the first time? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that was crazy. That was crazy. Hey, uh, subscribe to our exclusive uncut <laughs> behind the scenes, and you'll get the story. Fifteen dollars a month. Yeah, I, it's actually 25 on Twitter. Oh, it's actually even We're trying to get verified better. right now. So I'm, I am serious. This video won't be there, but on Twitter, check it out. We got some exclusive content coming out. It will not be available to everyone, but certain people, if you really want to see behind the scenes of what's going on, make sure you tap in. Um, so tap in, tap, tap, tap in. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the show. Make sure to leave a comment on the video. Let us know what you think. And also let us know which guests you want us to interview in the future. Got a lot of exciting episodes coming up, but we want to know who you want us to talk to. While you're there, make sure to go follow our Instagram and our Twitter. And like I always say, there's no destination in life. The journey is everything.